Welcome back third graders. Today we will start ELA Unit 1B Lesson 1. If you'll follow along with me, I'll read our intention and our criteria for today. We are learning to identify main ideas using key details. We will be successful when we can identify how nonfiction is organized into sections, explain the details of a small portion of text, and use details to infer the main idea of the text. Now, if you remember our intention, understanding the main idea of a text, the main idea is the of, the, of the text is mostly what the text is about and using the clues in the text to help us identify that. You will most commonly find the main idea within nonfiction text. If you think of main idea, it's kind of like a stool, like right here on the chart. The main idea is kind of like the seat where you'd put your bottom, and then the legs are kind of like the key details that help support the main idea, the stool where you sit at. One way to think about it are the clues. Number one, what is the text mostly about? So look for repeating words. Look at the titles and the headings. If it has pictures, look at the pictures. And sometimes you can identify the main idea of a text because it is easily stated in the first or the last sentence of the text or of a paragraph. And often you wanna look for clue words that are used repeatedly, as I mentioned before. For instance, if I was reading about kangaroos, there might be the word kangaroo or words that relate to kangaroos in the text throughout. Let's give it a try. Here are three vocabulary words for this first section of our text today. A full moon. The lighted moon is totally visible in the sky. Sliver. A small, narrow piece or slice of something. And if you notice, they have a sliver, sliver of the moon. They also have a sliver of, that's right, cheese. New moon. The lighted half of the moon is facing completely away from the earth. So when you look up at the sky at night and you see the moon and it looks kind of dark, you can see a little bit of it, but it's mainly dark. That is a new moon. Our text today, The Moon Seems to Change by Franklin M. Branley, illustrated by Barbara and Ed Emberley. Have you ever wondered what the moon is all about? Let's read to find out. Tonight, take a look at the sky. See if the moon is there. It may be big and round. It is a full moon. Maybe you will see only part of it. It may be a quarter moon. Or it might may be only a little sliver. It is called a crescent moon. As the nights go by, you can see changes in the moon. After the moon is full, you see less and less of it. There are three or four nights with no moons at all. Then you see more and more of it. The moon seems to change. It really doesn't. It seems to change because the moon goes around the earth. As it goes around, we see more of it. The moon gets bigger. It is a waxing moon, or we see less of it. The moon gets smaller. It is called a waning moon. Half of the moon is always lighted by the sun. Half is lighted and half is always in darkness. It's the same with Earth. While one half of Earth is having sunshine and daylight, the other half is getting no sunshine. It is night. Let's pause there, friends. There's a lot of information on these two pages that helps you understand a little bit about the moon. Let's look at page 44. Look at this diagram right here. What kind of information does that tell you? 
that's right. I see that there's an, an arrow with dotted lines going around the earth. So that tells me the way the earth revolves and then rotates. And then it also has these bigger arrows, which kind of show me the way the moon goes around the earth, revolves around the earth. But look, did you notice that the arrows are blue and then they get dark? I wonder what that can mean if I connect it to what the text was saying on 45. That's right. Sometimes half the moon is dark, half of it is light, similar to Earth. When it's daylight here on our half of the Earth, where we're at in Topeka, Kansas, the other half of the Earth is having nighttime or darkness. Look at the waxing moon and the waning moon. Remember, when a moon is waxing, it is getting bigger and looks bigger. But when it gets smaller, it looks like it's going further away. It's waning away. So what kind of shapes did you learn that the moon can be? It can be a full moon, a quarter moon, or a crescent moon, kind of like a sliver of moon. Nice job, third graders. Let's continue. A day on Earth is 24 hours long. A day on the moon is almost a month long. It takes the moon about four weeks to go around the Earth. Let's pause there, friends. Again, there is, are, is a lot of information on these two pages. Let's observe these pages really quick and see what information it tells us. Did you notice over here on page 20, 47 on the diagram with the moon going around the earth? It has people. I think that might illustrate to us that with people living on earth, it is what the people see of the moon as it rotates around the earth. For instance, on the left side, it's dark. So we learned on the other two pages that on this other side, it's going to be daylight or sunshine. And if we think of the front of the earth, what do you think it's on the other side? I would think you're right. I think it's almost the same. It depends on where you're at. You might have darkness. You might have sunlight. You might be right in the middle, almost like a sunset or a sunrise. We learned how long it takes for the moon to go around the earth. Do you remember how long? That's right. Four weeks. Look at the diagrams here on page 46. This first top one shows us how long it takes for the a day on Earth in 24 hours. Because we know by telling time, it takes 24 hours to go through the whole day here on Earth. A day on the moon is almost 30 days or a month long. So those are some of the key details so far in this story. Let's continue. So we've talked about some of the discussion questions that are leading to the main idea of this text. And kind of like that stool, we have talked about a few pieces that could be the legs of that stool to support the main idea. So I want you to start thinking about that as we move forward with your assignment today. So here are the questions you need to be prepared with when you meet with your class today. What different shapes can the moon be? There's three we talked about. One looks like a piece of cheese. That's right, a sliver. And then there's two others. What are some key details we learned in this section? And what is the main idea of this section? I'll leave that up to you to decide and discuss with your class and your teacher. Remember, you can always go back and review this video and the text to help support your answers. In your assignment today, third graders, it's all about the moon. You need to read these two paragraphs, this short little article, and then using the writing tool, write the main idea of the sentence below. Remember from our anchor chart to find the main idea, sometimes you look for repeated words, Maybe look at the title of the passage or the article. Maybe look at the first and last sentence. Maybe look for words that are repeated. And then 
After you determine what the main idea is, use the highlighting tool right here to highlight at least two details that help support what you think the main idea of this passage is all about the moon. When you are complete, click that check mark so your teacher can view it and be ready to share at class time. Let's review our intention and our success criteria for today. We are learning to identify, oops, sorry. We are learning to identify the main ideas using key details. We will be successful when we can identify how nonfiction is organized into sections. Did you notice that today's text, it had sections that started with the beginning. It kind of gave you an introduction to the shapes. And then it started talking about how the earth and the moon relate to each other and how they rotate around each other and how long it takes. Explain the details of a small portion of the text. You did that a little when we were talking about the different diagrams and using details to infer the main idea of a text. That's all for today, friends. Make sure to get your assignment done and don't forget to read for at least 20 minutes today for fun. Have a good day. See you tomorrow.